So the standoff between Indian and Chinese troops has been going on for close to four weeks now. It's officially the longest standoff since the 1962 war. It began with India's decision to boycott the BRI forum uh, back in May. Uh, that was really a sort of coming out party for Xi Jinping. The, the Chinese really did take grave offense and in fact they saw it as a personal insult. The timing of this whole uh, standoff at Doklam and now in hindsight, just a few days before Mr. Modi went to Washington DC, I don't think that is lost on uh, foreign policy mandarins in South Block. So in as much as the timing, yes, there is some merit in it, but, but really to say that India is doing this at the behest of Trump or to show to Trump that uh, India can be taken on board as a trustworthy ally, I, I wouldn't buy that. After Mr. Trump came to office, after all the, the rhetoric uh, of the campaign trail where he called out China, called it a bully, called it a trade manipulator, it was surprising uh, to see him actually meet Xi Jinping as one of the first uh, world leaders that he met and they met for a couple of days in Mar-a-Lago. It seemed like Mr. Trump had gone soft on China. And in any case, uh, Mr. Trump had sort of given up on this whole pivot to Asia, which was a big uh, foreign policy cornerstone for the Obama administration. So the feeling in Beijing was that the US, since it's already in retreating mode, might not want to be engaged. And I think Moscow has as much stake, if not more stake, than the Americans do in what is evolving between India and China, this, this face-off. Because Russia, of course, is one of the largest defense suppliers, our, our biggest defense supplier. Uh, it also has very healthy relations with China. Uh, and just last month, Russians helped India get full membership to the SEO. In fact, Russia played a pivotal role in getting India full membership uh, to the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So the Russians don't want things to go awry between India and China. One of the critical countries that, that's going to get affected because of One Belt, One Road is Afghanistan. And unless there is a, a stable and durable peace in Afghanistan, uh, One Belt, One Road will never take off. So the Chinese have, have you know, if, if you've noticed over the last few years, even tried to be an active player in the negotiation process between the Taliban and the Afghans. We helped build their new parliament building. Uh, there, there, there's a major dam that we helped build in Herat, highways that the Border Roads Organization is building. Both India and China have a stake in a peaceful Afghanistan, in security uh, in Afghanistan. The only other additional dynamic there, of course, is the presence of Pakistan and the, the China-Pakistan economic corridor. Uh, India has grave objections to CPEC passing through what is disputed territory. And this is, th these are concerns that India has articulated to the Chinese, but the Chinese haven't been amenable uh, to India's concerns or haven't been prepared to listen to India's concerns. this fracas that's been going on between uh, the, the Gulf states. Uh, I think India is in a unique position. India buys weapons from Israel. We also import gas from Iran. Uh, the Prime Minister was in Iran in March of 2016. He was there to inaugurate the Chabahar project. Certainly India has a lot more goodwill uh, in that part of the world. But for the Chinese trade, a hell of a lot more than India does with either Israel or even with Iran for that matter.